Today, we are going over new research from both Anthropic and McKinsey about AI's ability to automate and augment human workers and what it means for the future of work more broadly. Welcome back to the AI Daily Brief. Maybe the biggest question from a macro perspective when it comes to AI is what its actual impact on work will be, how much of current work you can automate, what the new patterns of human AI interaction are going to mean, what new types of work it unlocks, and how it reshapes business on the other side. And of course, what all of that together means for jobs in the economy. And yet at the same time, for most of the three years since ChatGPT launched, these kind of conversations have been largely theoretical. Increasingly, however, various stakeholders across the AI ecosystem are actually sharing research that is grounded in something. In the process, hopefully giving us a better sense of how things are playing out in actuality, not just in our imaginations. Two bits of research that we're going to look at today. One comes from Anthropic and was focused on estimating AI productivity gains from clawed conversations. Now, Anthropic has an ongoing initiative called the Anthropic Economic Index, which is persistent and ongoing research that's meant to understand AI's impact on the economy. They share a bunch of information on the Economic Index website and are continuously publishing new research, trying to understand how AI is and will impact different sectors and jobs. This new just-released research was basically meant to move from questions of usage to questions of impact. As they put it in their announcement tweet, the Anthropic Economic Index tells us where Claude is used and for which tasks, but it doesn't tell us how useful Claude is. How much time does it save? Now, if you have heard me absolutely yammer about the AI ROI benchmarking study, you will know that this is of keen interest to me right now. I think we desperately need better understanding of how AI is actually impacting things in the real world, and we need better, more persistent and ongoing benchmarks to help us understand how that changes over time. By the way, due to popular demand, we're keeping the survey open for just a couple more days. So if you have not contributed yet and you want to get the full readout, you can go to roisurvey.ai. See how smoothly we integrated that right there? In any case, back to Anthropic. The research team sampled around 100,000 conversations. Then they used Claude to estimate how much time was saved for each conversation. Basically, they generated two core estimates for each task in those conversations. A time estimate without AI, in other words, an estimation of the hours a human professional would need to complete that particular task without using AI. And then, of course, the time estimate with AI, which is how long it would take if you were using AI augmentation and assistance. Now, there is a lot of really interesting analysis around just how difficult it is for humans and AI to estimate task duration. But basically, they did a bunch of work to vet Claude's estimates against much stronger real-world evidence. Things like data sets of thousands of real-world software development tasks gathered from JIRA tickets in order to make sure that Claude's estimation wasn't wildly off. Overall, they found that the model predictions have meaningful correlation with real-world outcomes, making them useful for comparing one task to another or tracking changes over time. They then organized things into categories of tasks and estimated a task time, an hourly wage, a corresponding task cost, and an estimate of the time savings between using AI and not using AI. So for example, for post-secondary vocational education teachers, on the task developing curricula and planned course content and methods of instruction, they estimated four and a half hours as the task time, $33 as an hourly wage, and 96% time savings. For executive secretaries and executive administration, preparing invoices, reports, memos, letters, financial statements, and other documents, they estimated that at 1.2 hours at an hourly wage of $37, and estimated 87% time savings. Across all of the different tasks in their sample, on average, they would take about 90 minutes to complete without AI assistance. And they found that Claude speeds up those individual tasks by about 80%. This is, of course, the big banner headline. 80% time savings across tasks represented by 100,000 conversations. Now, there is a lot of nuance here. They point out that task length varies dramatically across different occupations. Food preparation tasks, installation and maintenance tasks, and transportation tasks take 20 to 30 minutes on average as opposed to, for example, investment-related tasks, which take humans two hours, legal tasks that average 1.8 hours, etc. They also find that time savings are highly uneven across occupations. And while the average was about 80% and the median was 84%, there were very significant outliers. For example, they say the task of checking diagnostic images only shows 20% time savings. In this case, they say because it's a task that can already be done quickly by experts without AI assistance. On the other end of the spectrum, compiling information from reports sees 95% time savings. Now, from there, they get really macro and found that if you assumed it would take 10 years for AI to reach universal adoption across the U.S. economy and using current models, i.e. AI not improving, Claude's estimates would imply an annual increase in U.S. labor productivity of 1.8%. Now, while that might not sound huge, 
that would nearly double the current long-term growth rate and would achieve some of the highest growth rates in our history, including in the post-war period as well as in the late 1990s. Still, I want to stay a little bit farther off the macro part and focus in on the task-level understanding and bring it then over to the McKinsey study. Their report is called Agents, Robots, and Us, Skill Partnerships in the Age of AI. And the goal of the report in many ways was to move away from rudimentary job loss type analysis to try to use the atomic unit of a skill as a better way to dissect the likely impacts of AI and agent adoption. One of the goals was to figure out which skills are most likely to change and in what ways, as well as which are most or least exposed to automation, and to understand the potential economic impacts of the skill disruption and change that's going to happen. So some of the big banner headline statistics, McKinsey estimates, and this is the one that's going to be running around, probably will end up in the title of this show, 57% of U.S. work hours they estimate right now are automatable with today's tech. If companies redesign work around agents, they see the possibility of $2.9 trillion in annual value by 2030. They break different occupations into seven different archetypes based on the potential roles of people, agents, and robots, by which they mean embodied and physical AI. For example, in the people-centric category, that's future work that's done mostly by people. It includes things like registered nurses, psychologists, and firefighters, and represents 34% of the current U.S. workforce. On the other end of the spectrum, in the agent-centric category of occupations like accountants, software developers, and lawyers, where big chunks of that work will be done by agents, that represents around 30% of the workforce. The group who will have a very clear mix where humans will lead teams of agents, in their estimation includes sales reps, secondary school teachers, and HR specialists, and represents 21% of the workforce. And then there's a whole bunch more around the robots, which is also really interesting, but for our purposes, you get the point that they're trying to understand exposure of different job categories based on these skills within those job categories to AI and automation. Unsurprisingly, the fastest growing skill is AI fluency, which is up almost 700%. One of the big things that's interesting about the McKinsey report and that I think merits even more consideration, is that they find that 70% of skills appear in both automatable and non-automatable work and will, in their estimation, be evolving skills. So in the Skills Change Index, they break things into enduring skills, which are things like social and emotional skills that are the most future-proof, versus evolving skills that, in their estimation, are very rarely disappearing, but are changing meaningfully in how they're applied. The examples they give are things like writing becoming prompting and editing and coding becoming architecture and debugging. Now, one of the things that both organizations found is a debunking of the idea that automation comes for low-wage work first. Anthropic found that, quote, tasks associated with higher-wage occupations tend to take more time and thus offer the biggest savings from AI. And for McKinsey, their agent-centric archetype with the highest automation potential includes roles averaging $70,000 a year, which is on the high end. One of the other interesting common insights is that both studies are suggesting that even as we get these big gains, like 80% reduction in key task time, we are dealing with new types of bottlenecks. In this case, human bottlenecks like coordination and supervision. Part of the re-architecting of systems is going to be to speed up those human processes that could get in the way of the overall gains. This harkens back to something I've talked about a lot, that when we move to a new technology paradigm, we're not trading existing problems for no problems, we're trading existing problems for a different set of problems that hopefully have benefits overall relative to the old problems that we had before. For those who are thinking about their personal careers, McKinsey's skill change index, while inherently oversimplified, as all visualizations are, does provide an interesting visual way to think about what skills to focus on. Think about a four-quadrant chart where the y-axis represents growth in demand from low to high on the top, and the x-axis is exposure to automation, once again from low to high. As you are thinking about the skills you want to develop, low exposure to automation and high growth in demand is a pretty valuable quadrant to be in. Now, high growth in demand and high exposure to automation doesn't mean don't do it, but that's a lot of the areas that are going to see the biggest transition in what those skills mean. Writing, coding, and accounting are all going to exist in the future, but look very different than they do now. Where a lot of this nets out is just more work that's needed on the new patterns of interaction with how human AI hybrid teams are going to work together. I think in addition to this task-based analysis of ROI that we're going to see a ton of in 2026, new patterns and templates for hybrid workforce collaboration are going to be a big theme as well. As I said at the beginning, a lot of these conversations have been by default theoretical for the past several years. And I think it's very exciting that we are moving into the time where they can be based in actual research and data from patterns of usage and impact. There is obviously much more in both of these reports than I could get into in this episode. And so I hope you go check them out individually as well. For now, that is going to do it for today's AI Daily Brief. Appreciate you listening or watching as always. And until next time, peace.